Thank you. <laughs> but again, look how far away frogs are. Did you plant them in the audience? <laughs> because some visually look more like a roadrunner or heron or pelican. split off, right? 
And so birds as a group, as a whole, split off from dinosaurs via theropods around the same time. So by my understanding, they're all kind of equally. Now, visually, again, and I think this has, could do with a convergent evolution and the conditions that the animals are in, some might be more visually similar to dinosaurs because of that, or it may be that they change less over time, right? So like alligators and crocodiles, they have this form that has maintained over time. It is not that they are less evolved than other species, but they have a body shape that has worked for them over time. So it hasn't necessitated the vast changes, say from you know a lizard to a bird. So I think some of those animals that are looking more like dinosaurs are really just ones that haven't needed to change as much because they're just, they're melding well with their environment and the forms they have worked really well. I think I was compared also to the breeds of domestic dogs. You find all breeds of dog are the same species, Canis lupus familiaris, the, canine, the familiar canine, which is just a subspecies of the wolf, which is why they can hybridize so easily. You see all that incredible diversity we pulled out in literally, what, four to 6,000 years? Uh, it doesn't mean that, like, for instance, you know, that'd be the same question, like, is a husky or a German shepherd more related to a wolf because it looks like it? Then and a they, Yeah, then a chihuahua. The answer would be, if you look at the genetics, they are the same. And it was such a recent, uh, subspecies that there really is no difference, which, you know, breed bands, that's why they're brought into question is, you know, dogs are just left to the environment in which they're raised. Uh, you know, the proud pit bull mom here. Um, and <laughs> <laughs> those bitties. Uh, and I think it's, it's about how you treat the dogs, how you raise it, there it comes down to they are the same species, and you can't even get breeds, like if you go, oh, I got a purebred dog, I got to do them with papers, you can do genetic tests online, no one will give you papers for your dog. So even using the genetic code, you can't even clarify breed lines. I think it's interesting, that's just that they're so related. So I think that is a parallel example of what you're asking in that, that a lot of genetics are amazing. Things pop up, but just because they look different, they're just showing genes. We have phenotypes and genotypes. Phenotypes are what you see, and genotypes are you know, your genes. So my mom has blue eyes, my dad has brown eyes. I literally have blue eyes under my brown eyes, which is you know, looking at a dominant expression of the gene. Um, but I carried both genes. I could pass on the genes to my child for blue eyes or brown eyes, even though I reflect just brown eyes. So we have a lot more neurogenetic code that we don't express, which I think speaks to that diversity. So I think, unfortunately, we're at the end of our time.